Amines may be the most important organic molecules on the planet. They show up in all kinds of biological uses and functions. They're used as building blocks for polymers to make textiles and plastics, Kevlar. They're used to make dyes that color plastics and textiles and so on. They're all over the place. They're important in organic synthesis because we need to make them for so many things. Probably well over half of all pharmaceutical compounds are amines of one kind or another. So it's well worth taking a look at their structure and some properties. First, let's look at amines that have sp3 hybridized nitrogen. Compounds that only have one alkyl group attached to nitrogen are called primary amines. If they have two alkyl groups attached, they're called secondary amines. And if they have three alkyl groups attached, they're called tertiary amines. There's a fourth group, they're ammonium salts of amines, and they have four carbons attached. It's real important to notice that primary, secondary, and tertiary amines all have this unshared pair associated with the nitrogen that dominates their chemistry and dramatically affects the structure. Because of that unshared pair, together with three atoms attached, the geometry of the orbitals around nitrogen is tetrahedral. But if somebody asks you about the atomic geometry of amines, you would need to say trigonal pyramidal because we can't see the electrons, they're not an atom. And so if you take a look at the atoms arranged around nitrogen, it doesn't look like a tetrahedron. And the fact that we have a tetrahedral arrangement of orbitals would suggest that we could have a stereogenic center at nitrogen. And you can, but typically do not. Because if one of the orbitals is occupied by a pair of electrons, that nitrogen rapidly inverts. So you may have a chiral center R on the left side. That will be S on the right side. And generally, they're in very rapid equilibrium. Might also mention that this quaternary ammonium salt, which has a positive charge here, will need to have some kind of an anion associated with it. Let's take a look at some important structures for sp2 hybridized nitrogen. There are compounds called imines that have a carbon-nitrogen double bond, and both those atoms are sp2 hybridized. So the carbon has a p orbital that can be adjacent to the nitrogen p orbital. They line up and overlap. That fits our picture of a double bond. Alternatively, we can have sp2 nitrogen in a ring. Pyridine is a good example. On the left, I've written pyridine with a circle in the ring because it's really just like benzene. It has two equivalent resonance forms, neither one of which is representative of, how, of what we really have. Let me redraw the pyridine structure so I can show you something about that lone pair of electrons. I've drawn that ring turned on its side, and now you see that every atom in the ring has a p orbital that can line up vertically and overlap with the neighbors. So we really do have an aromatic ring. These orbitals overlap above the ring and in a circle below the ring. So we have a typical pi system like benzene. Now what I want to point out is the lone pair of electrons is an sp2 orbital and it has no overlap with the ring. It's not involved in aromaticity. This turns out to be very important in affecting the availability of that unshared pair of electrons when pyridine acts as a base or as a nucleophile. And then finally another really important example is pyrrole. Again, the left structure has been written with a ring around it because it is an aromatic compound. At the same time, we can write it as a structure on the right to emphasize that there is an unshared pair of electrons in nitrogen that participates in that aromatic ring. Unlike the unshared pair in pyridine, which is available to act as a base, this unshared pair is not because if this unshared pair acts as a base or as a nucleophile, the aromatic ring has to be disrupted. One of the key attributes of it means which affects the physical property, is the ability to hydrogen bond, just like alcohols. The difference is the hydrogen bonding in amines is weaker. But like alcohols, we can have hydrogen bonding between multiple molecules of amines. So these molecules are drawn to each other much more strongly because of the hydrogen bonding, as I've shown here and here. And notice, for a amine that has a hydrogen attached, there's two types of hydrogen bonding. The hydrogen attached to the nitrogen, can hydrogen bond to another molecule, and the nitrogen of the amine itself can hydrogen bond to another hydrogen of another amine molecule. This greatly increases the intermolecular forces and raises the bonding points. Hydrogen bonding also increases the solubility of amines in water because the amines can hydrogen bond with the water molecules. 
Here, I've written water molecules in place of amine molecules. And you can see that the same type of dual hydrogen bonding can take place. The hydrogen of an amine can hydrogen bond with the oxygen of a molecule of water. And the nitrogen itself of the amine can hydrogen bond with the hydrogen of water. So amines have greatly increased water solubility. Look at these data. I've put the boiling points here of three compounds that have almost the same molar mass, propane, ethylamine, and ethanol. And look at the dramatic differences in boiling points. For propane, there's no hydrogen bonding possible, and it boils at a very low temperature. Ethylamine is a primary amine that has substantial hydrogen bonding, and it boils much higher. But ethanol, which has even stronger hydrogen bonding, boils at 78 degrees compared to 17. The bonding points of these three molecules provide additional evidence regarding the importance of hydrogen bonding. In this case, all three amines have the same number of carbon atoms, but we have a primary amine, we have a secondary amine, and there's some steric hindrance that reduces hydrogen bonding, and then we have a tertiary amine, which has no hydrogen, and so there is no hydrogen bonding. And look at the difference of bonding points. The primary amine boils higher than the secondary amine, which boils much higher than the tertiary amine. So hydrogen bonding dramatically affects the bonding points of amines. Look at water solubility. Butylamine is miscible with water. That means it can be mixed in any proportion. It's infinitely soluble in water. Compare this to, let's say, butyl chloride. Now the electronegativity of chlorine and nitrogen is identical. On the Pauling scale, they have a value of 3.0. So the polarity of the carbon heteroatom bond is the same. But butyl chloride is essentially insoluble in water. While butylamine is miscible, this is due entirely to hydrogen bonding. As we increase the hydrocarbon part of the molecule, the solubility is somewhat reduced, but pentylamine is also very soluble. By the time we get to hexylamine, we have six carbons, so solubility is significantly reduced by the hydrocarbon piece, and the solubility is only 12 grams per liter. It's significant, but a lot less than the others. The point is, hydrogen bonding greatly increases the solubility of amines in water. But as the amine portion of the molecule gets to be a smaller and po smaller portion of the molecule, that effect is diminished and solubility of amines in water decreases. One more bit of evidence. Take a look at triethylamine. Now it can't hydrogen bond with its own hydrogens to water. And now the triethylamine is only slightly soluble in water. The nitrogen can hydrogen bond to hydrogens of H2O, but it has no hydrogen hydrogen bond to the oxygen. Same number of carbons as hexylamine, but less soluble. Let me give you a quick overview of chemical properties. First and foremost, I want you to think of amines as bases. That unshared pair of electrons on nitrogen is available to form a bond with hydrogen. Secondly, and also really importantly, I want you to think of amines as nucleophiles. That unshared pair of electrons on nitrogen is available to form a bond with carbon. So if carbon has a leaving group attached to it, nitrogen can act as a nucleophile and displace that leaving group. Alternatively, nitrogen can add as a nucleophile to the carbonyl group. The unshared pair of electrons is attracted to the partial positive charge of the carbon of the carbonyl group, and the bond is formed with carbon as the pi bond breaks. So we have three key reactions, protonation, substitution, and addition. In addition to that, Primary and secondary amines can act as acids. When we have a super strong base, the unshared pair of electrons of a base can actually abstract a proton from the nitrogen. This takes a very strong base because the pKa of the hydrogens attached to nitrogen is about 35. Very, very low acidity. But I mention this because it's really important. Once the proton is removed from that nitrogen, we make something called an amide. And that amide can be a very useful base in organic chemistry. The most widely used example is diisopropyl amide. There are two isopropyl groups. You start with a secondary amine. That nitrogen already has a pair of electrons on it, so I'm going to draw that in too. Plus now it has another unshared pair because it's lost a proton. It has a negative charge, and lithium is usually the cation. 
This is called LDA, lithium diisopropyl amide. So the acidity of amines, although it's very low, plays an important role. And finally, one other kind of chemistry. Amines oxidize readily. Now what this means to you and me is, these compounds are subject to degradation when they stand in air. They slowly turn brown, and they usually have to be purified before you want to use them. There's useful oxidation chemistry of amines, but I'm not going to touch on that right now. So there's your overview of the chemical reactivity of amines. I want you to think of them as bases and nucleophiles, almost exclusively, as I've shown here.